Hello everybody and welcome to my how to S rank every single mission on Hell and Hell as easy as possible walkthrough. Here you will be able to learn about some efficient cheese strategies that will allow you to much more easily earn S ranks on Hell and Hell difficulty, which is by far the hardest difficulty to earn S ranks on. Now some of you clicking on this video might be wondering, but Matt, the style requirement is higher to get an S rank on Dante Must Die. Well, I can assure you that all of these strategies work pretty much exactly the same on the Dante Must Die difficulty with some minor differences. However, not enough to matter. I can assure you I used every strategy you'll see in this video on Dante Must Die as well, and I was still able to S-rank every mission on every difficulty. So rest assured, this guide applies to all difficulties. Anyways, if you want to skip ahead to a particular mission that you're having trouble with, feel free to use the timestamps in the description to skip to any specific part of the video. And that being said, let's begin! Alright, so here we are starting things off with the prologue, which is the first mission in the game. And just for everyone's FYI, uh, I will only be showing fights in the game that are mandatory, or if they're not mandatory, then I will be showing them for a specific reason, like if I need to take an optional fight in order to build up a little more style. Sometimes, very rarely, that happens to be the case, but 9 times out of 10, throughout this video, you will only be seeing the mandatory fights because, like I said, 9 times out of 10, that is all that is what is required um, in order to get an S rank in each mission. So we finished the first fight relatively quickly. Um, I built up 3,600 and something style. And then this is the second mandatory fight. Uh, Queen Empusa, very tanky, very buff enemy. But uh, whenever we see an enemy like that, my favorite thing to do, full charge ragtime, double trigger showdown, full charge buster arm. By the end of the first two fights, I had 6,000 style, just a little bit over. And once you get to Yurizen, you cannot build style on the Yurizen fight. At least the ones that you're expected to lose anyway. So just feel free to get your ass kicked. And once the mission ends, you will be good to go. And you will also get your no damage bonus, even if yours and hits you. So don't worry. Now, this is mission one. And guess what? The only mandatory fight in this mission is the boss. Now, with this boss, this boss has only one attack that can hit you full screen. As you can see, I'm standing as far away from the boss as possible. And the reason for that is because, as I just said... The boss only has one attack that can hit you from this distance away. And it's very telegraphed. Every time the arm goes in the ground, you can expect it to come out below you shortly after. Once the Antonora spawns, I fucking can't stand this enemy. So I full time, or sorry, full charge ragtime and then full charge buster arm to just instantly kill him. Uh, who cares if that's a uh, way overkill? We have the money to spare on the Devil Breakers, so why the fuck not? Just, uh, by the way, that Antonora shows up at the halfway point. As soon as you lower the boss to half health, um, that, that will trigger the Antonora to spawn. So you could expect him at around that time, uh, every time during the fight. And I ran up and decided I wanted to build some style, but honestly, it's really not necessary. If you wanted to play Puss that entire fight and just shoot him and never get close and only rely on the no damage bonus, I'm pretty sure that would be enough to push you to an X rank. But anyways, uh, you know, mission two. Here we go. Next mission. This will be the first mandatory fight. So just do your best on building as much style here as possible. There's no crazy enemies in this fight. The most dangerous enemies in this fight are the um, Sin Scissors, or I think they're called Death Scissors in this game, but I like calling them Sin Scissors because I love Devil May Cry 1, and that's, this enemy is uh, very obviously a shout-out to that enemy from the first game but anyways we did our best i managed to build up uh two s's and f ended the fight with 5300 style not too bad not too shabby this will be the second mandatory fight of the level and like i said we're not gonna get too uh you know you don't have to stress out too much like just do your best but i would imagine by this point you by the time you've unlocked hell and hell you know the game pretty well you know how the style system works. You know how to build style effectively. Just never use the same move in uh, succession too many times in a row. And, you know, you'll build good style. And that's basically all we're focusing on during these easy fights. Uh, you'll notice I've sped up the footage for a lot of these fights. 
And that's mainly the case for fights that I don't think I need to talk about or analyze too much. Um, you know, just play the fight at your best and chances are you'll get the results that you need. Um, like I said, you should understand the game to the point where you know what's required of you and you can do your best to work towards that. So we ended that fight with 5,200 style. This will be after you've acquired the um, second Nidhogg Hatchling, I believe it is. And this will force you into another mandatory fight with uh, some dudes with scythes and Antonoras. I didn't bother memorizing the names of the dudes with scythes because these enemies suck ass, so I don't really give a shit what their name is. But yeah, so just do your best, obviously, to build up as much style as you can. Now we're at 5,000 of 46. This will be the last mandatory fight of the level. So this will be your last big opportunity to build up as much style as possible. And this fight is great for doing it. All you get are these shitty-ass enemies throughout this entire fight. And some healing bugs. But besides that, that's it. So, it's very easy to work with. These enemies are very easy to style on. They're very slow. Whenever they attack, their attacks are very telegraphed. And it's very easy to just take this fight into your own hands and basically make everyone here your bitch. They are at your mercy, absolutely. And it's very easy, as you can see, to get a triple S here. So... Uh, dispatch them with great haste, and we'll move the fuck along. And, uh, now this will be after you receive the final Nidhogg Hatchling. This is just a visual showcase to show you that you could skip that, uh, Antonora fight. And then go straight to the boss. So here we are. Uh, now I changed my, uh, Devil Breaker loadout a little bit, as you can see. And you will notice that quite a few times throughout this guide. Um... Always take advantage of the fact that you could shop at Nico, um, at the like just before every boss fight throughout the game, and I made uh, I made the opportunity to do that, or I made use of it rather. Now, as you see, I've already died. That's my first death of the level. However, um, I'm not too worried. So here's the thing: general rule of thumb, you want to get to a boss on Hell and Hell difficulty with at least five thousand five hundred style points if you can manage to reach the boss with that amount of style then you will guaranteed have it the s rank in the bag no matter how well or poorly you perform as long as you have 5500 going into the boss fight you got the s and you could just be confident that that will be the case now i don't think i am at 5500 uh because i don't remember reaching it however uh, on a boss like this, Goliath in particular, I wasn't too worried about the fact that I didn't have the 5500 going into this fight because fighting Goliath offers uh, a lot of opportunity in order to gain style. So even though I wasn't at the required amount just yet, I was confident that I could get it just by fighting him. And I'm trying to, uh, you know, be as stylish here as I can. But if I'm being completely honest in this footage... I don't have a lot of practice against Goliath, not as Nero anyway, and I'm not too familiar with his moves. Like, I know his big moves, like, as you can see, I gave him a wide berth there when he went for his big nuke, and I also knew to exit the building when he did the big flame tornado, but his, like, general attacks where he's just swinging his arms and shit, I honestly don't know him too well. I haven't fought Goliath all that many times. I don't know him like the back of my hand. And so, th what you're seeing here is really just me freestyling it. I'm just fighting him in hopes that I will get an S and that he won't be too difficult for me. He's really not that hard of a boss, but, you know, the fact that he already did hit me once was, you know, pretty shitty. Um, and the thing is, if you, get, if you get hit three times and use all three of your gold orbs you pretty much forfeit the S rank because the pe the score penalty you will receive uh, for using three gold orbs is so massive that it pretty much just guarantees you're not getting an S. So if you ever get hit three times on Hell and Hell, just go ahead and restart because you're probably not doing it. But um, yeah, I did get hit twice during this fight, as you can see, but I managed to build up quite a lot of style there with the Devil Trigger Showdown. And as you can see, I did just barely... Uh, surpass what was required for the style. So, yeah, Goliath's not too bad. Like, it's really not that bad. But anyways, this is mission three. And as soon as we start the mission and go into the first fight, uh, this is a great opportunity to make use of the 
camera manipulation. As you can see, I dropped down into the corner here and I was able to perform a full EX taunt and raise my style multiplier to an S rank before I even started fighting enemies. And then I start going to town on these enemies, even though there's not many of them, you, this is a huge opportunity to gain a lot of points because using that camera manipulation trick allowed me to raise my score multiplier so high that, you know, even th though this is a short fight and it doesn't go too long, you'll see by the end of it, I have a fuck ton of points. 6,500, that is huge. That is massive. A lot of points. Now, you could perform a trick similar to the one I just did in this fight, um, but I actually lost the footage unfortunately of me doing that i would have showed you guys how to do it but uh i didn't have it so and in this fight in the footage you're seeing me uh perform here i actually forgot to do the trick uh, and i totally would have did it if i had it remembered because it does give you a lot of style but um i just fought this fight as normal because i was running on autopilot at this point and i just really forgot uh that you can make use of that trick in the second fight as well but Nonetheless, despite that fact, regardless, we were able to get quite a few style points. Uh, although we do lose a lot of style points. I lost over a thousand style for that fight, uh, even though I did pretty well. Once you get to this part, you do not want to fight any of the enemies there. It may seem like you're supposed to fight them, but just ignore them and destroy the two blood sacks. Once you destroy the second one, you'll be in the next mandatory fight, which is what you're seeing right now. And... This fight is a great opportunity to be stylish as well, uh, and it's a great opportunity to earn back a lot of points. So even though we lost over a thousand points in the last fight, uh, this is an opportunity to make sure that we don't lose too many more. As you can see, I'm already doing a lot better than I was in the second fight. Uh, we already got a triple S, so yeah, that fight, I, I did pretty damn well, which I'm pretty thankful for. And that should raise our style higher than it was. Yes, it did by over 200 points. So that's very good. Uh, so we're still at that 5,500 point limit. Now this will be the last five, or sorry, this will be the last mandatory fight in the level with these uh, Sin Scissors. And uh, it's kind of hard to be really stylish on this fight. This fight, it's very easy to lose a lot of your style points because there's so few enemies. I think there's only two, maybe three. Yeah, there's three Sin Scissors in this fight. So it's very easy to lose points here because there's so few enemies, which makes less opportunity for you to build style. But just try your best. I highly recommend practicing uh, fighting these enemies beforehand because they can be a little tricky in how they need to be dispatched. They block most of your attacks, uh, which makes it a little difficult to gain style. But you could still be stylish on these guys, I can assure you. And I was stylish enough to only lose a, a little more than 200 points there. But I'm not worried because I'm only 100 points under the limit. And even though I didn't get to the boss with 5,500, I'm confident that I can get the 5,500 through the boss fight. So I'm not too worried here. Now, I did make use of Nico before this boss fight started in order to buy a very specific loadout. I bought all Punchline Devil Breakers and one Buster Arm at the very end. And the reason for that is because you can cheese the ever-living shit out of this boss. This boss is pretty annoying, or can be annoying if you don't know how to fight her and you don't know her too well. However, if you full charge Punchline and use the aerial attack and then let go, uh, it will always knock her down. Now, she's being very uncooperative here. Um, it normally you're able to get her into a nice loop where you could just keep full charge punchlining her over and over and drop her to the ground every time but uh there is a chance that when you do that when she when artemis gets down she will just zip to as far away as possible from you uh and then you'll have to make your way back towards her in order to start the loop again and as you can see she's doing that to me quite a lot she's not making this very easy for me and I did die a second time, but as long as we don't die a third time, I could still get the 5,500, so I'm not too worried. And, uh, yeah, see, she's being very uncooperative, which is very fucking annoying, but, uh, you know, just keep chasing her down. I, I can guarantee you that this footage you're seeing of her, uh, like, this is a example of her being unlucky 
for me. Like, your run should go smoother than this on paper. But yeah, so now we got her in my uh, punchline loop. Actually, I totally forgot to buy the buster arm. I was supposed to buy it, and I didn't. That's interesting. In the footage, I didn't have it. But, oh well. So now from this point, I'm just most likely going to freestyle. And uh, I, we have uh, lowered her health quite a lot, so she is only moments away from doing her uh, big finisher attack. As you can see, she's starting it right now. Whenever she gets low health, uh, she will start doing this. And it's great when she does this, because obviously, she's not attacking you. She's not performing any of her uh, attack patterns. And you just have free reigns to beat the ever-living fuck out of her. I was having a little bit of trouble here. But I, I, I've literally never seen that move go off because I've never fucked that up before. I don't even know what that attack looks like when she finishes. But yeah, so as you can see, we knocked her ass down, Devil Trigger Showdown, and then Buster uh, does a fuck ton of damage, more than enough to finish her off. Uh, but if I had a Buster arm, if I had brought that last, that would have did way more damage than what I did. But, granted, that fight took so long that I didn't even need the Buster Arm by that point. But, yeah, that fight, if you just replicate my strategy, that fight should go a lot easier for you than it did for me. Because, uh, she, like I said, she was very uncooperative. But, anyways, we're on to Mission 4. This will be the first V mission. And, unfortunately, Mission 4 is actually one of V's hardest missions to S-rank. So, uh, you're going to be feeling the difficulty straight out of the gate. Now... Uh, I'm not too concerned here in terms of fighting regular enemies. However, there is a lot of camera manipulation and strategy that you can utilize when playing as V. And you will see that later in the video. However, I don't do it too much during Mission 4 because I find the enemies in Mission 4 to be very manageable. Uh, the fights aren't too bad. They're not too stressful. So I just play normally like I normally would. And as you can see, you could build quite a lot of style off the first fight. 5,000s, uh, nothing to scoff at, nothing, to, not too bad at all. And then, um, yeah, with V, I mean, with V, V's the definition of just, you know what, try your best and you'll probably see results. You don't have to be super fancy, you don't have to go super try hard. Uh, with V, he's, he's the, the number one character in the game to build style on. It's easy... It's, it's the easiest to build style with V more than it is with any other character in the game. Although, I guess you could argue Virgil probably builds style faster than him, but even then it's debatable, because a lot of the time V builds an absurd amount of style. Um, but anyways, I guess it just depends on how you perform. This will be the second mandatory fight of the level, and uh, yeah, we're, I'm still just playing uh, normally like I normally would. I'm not too worried about these enemies. Antonors are annoying, but they're very predictable. And what I love about V is, you know, uh, even if you're fighting annoying enemies, like nobody's here, nobody's are very annoying. However, when you're playing as V, uh, enemies, you know, they'll very quickly aggro to your pets rather than you. And then once they're aggro to the pets, you really have nothing to worry about. And, you know, V is easily the most beginner-friendly character to play in the game. So you shouldn't have too much trouble building style as him at all. By this point, you should have a really good grasp on how to play him. 5,877 points, very good. We're over the required amount going into this next fight. This will be the last mandatory fight of the level. And this fight does have a Judica, which is this enemy you see me targeting right now. Judicas are one of the most annoying enemies to fight in the game by far. Uh, so this fight can be a little tricky if you're... Like, you could definitely struggle on gaining style during this fight. It's definitely possible. As you can see, I died, uh, which sucked. I got hit. But, I know I'm over the required amount of style points, so I don't really give a fuck that I died. I still have uh, one gold orb I can lose before I'm, uh, you know. I still have two gold orbs left, which means I'm allowed to die one more time. I can get hit one more time and still get an S rank. It's basically what I'm trying to say. I'm struggling. I'm fumbling my words. Now, uh, during... Is this... No. Goliath was the first boss we won. Actually, no. There was a boss before that. That shitty fucking blood sack thing. But anyways, this is like the first difficult boss in the game, I would say. Uh, and I mean... When I say difficult, I mean 
he himself isn't that difficult, but on Hell and Hell, he is pretty difficult because it's very easy to get hit here. And uh, with this boss, I would just highly recommend... What I love to do is full charge spam Griffin shot. Uh, Griffin acts as like your gun, uh, as like Nero has Blue Rose and Dante has Ebony and Ivory. For V, it's Griffin is basically your gun or the substitute for a gun. And he, he works and functions the same way. So if you charge shot with Griffin before letting go, as you could see me using a lot in this fight, you'll see the triple uh, Thunderbolt that just chain lightnings down a path. And that move, I love spamming it during this fight because it hits all three of the uh, uh, Nidhogg heads. And if you manage to kill all three Nidhogg heads, you will stun Nidhogg himself. And then it gives you free reign to just go to town on him like you see now. Uh, he's stunned for quite a while, and this is a great opportunity to do big damage. Uh, I'm also reading my book this entire fight, which allows Nightmare to stay in play longer. Because Nightmare consumes Devil Trigger the longer he's out. However, when you're reading your book, you're building Devil Trigger. So if you read your book while Nightmare is out, Nightmare will stay out longer. And also... Shadow does offer full invincibility frames when you dodge with him, using him. Like, when you press uh, left or right and X, uh, you will uh, perform the dodge mechanic. And with V, he uses Shadow and it's full invincibility frames. It's a great move to spam at any point in the game. However, during this fight, I just don't recommend it. I, I find myself getting hit more often when I spam shadow dodge rather than just walking around and moving around as you can see throughout this whole fight I just run back and forth from one end of the arena to the other and I stay as far away from Nidhogg as possible and I find that is the best way to dodge him uh, so much is going on on screen during this boss fight it's very easy to get hit so I find that's the best way to dodge and I highly recommend that you do the same. But yeah, that fight's not too bad if you can manage to execute that strategy. So now we're on to mission 5. And the mission starts right off the bat with a mandatory fight. Uh, I totally forgot these enemies' names. I think Are they called Riot? I don't fucking remember. But anyways, um, these enemies are actually incredibly dangerous. And you're going to see that uh, coming up in uh, some footage up ahead. But yeah, these enemies do not take them lightly. On Hell and Hell, these enemies can definitely uh, and very sneakily fuck you over. They're very fast, very aggressive. I know they look pretty easy, and most of the time they are pretty easy to deal with. But if you ever drop your guard against those enemies, they can very easily rob you. And uh, you will be seeing footage of that very soon. But anyways, this will be the second mandatory fight of the level. And uh, there's a rule of thumb there. You saw both my pets die right off the bat. That was because I detonated that explosive canister that was on the floor right next to them. Um, but, even though my pets died from it, you should always get rid of explosive canisters or map hazards before a fight starts. Because you definitely don't want those randomly fucking you over when you're trying to gain style on enemies. It's very easy to lose track of a map hazard while you're focusing on gaining style. And, it, trust me, I've had runs end where... I died and lost a gold orb, excuse me. And, uh, because I didn't see a map hazard or I didn't get rid of it, uh, right away. And they can just very easily and un unintentionally fuck you over, so... Definitely make your best effort to get rid of them as soon as possible, because they're only a detriment to you. Um, and yeah, so... Towards the end of this fight, we have a Judica. Um, which again, is one of the most annoying enemies in the game, so just do your best to gain as much style during that fight as possible. As you can see, we didn't gain too much, but I'm not too worried. We left that fight with 4,100. The next fight, this fight's much easier to gain a lot of style on with the Queen and Pusa. Personally, I love this enemy because she's not all that hard to fight. She's very uh, uh, easy to predict. She's very, uh, you know, straightforward in the, in the way you were supposed to combat her. Uh, nothing too complicated. As you can see, we very easily got a triple S. And uh, once we finish her off, we're going to be ending this fight with definitely a decent score. Actually, that's not that decent at all. 4,600? Damn, I thought I'd have a lot more than that. But, not to worry. We're still in good shape. This will be the next mandatory fight of 
the mission. It's very hard to not S rank this mission. Trust me, this mission's not that bad. They give you a lot of opportunities during this mission to gain tons of style. This fight will be a lot of uh, Antonoras and Nobodies. There's plenty of opportunity here to gain a lot of style. These enemies are tough, bulky, hard to kill, and that just means more style points for you. So don't worry, it's all good. However, uh, from what I understand about Nobodies, apparently if you leave them alone too long, they spawn more of them. I don't know if that's true. Somebody told me that in my live stream chat. Uh, I don't know how true that is. I haven't really play tested enough to figure that out, but yeah, so when you do see a nobody, you do kind of want to prioritize them. Actually, yeah, I did see another one spawn there. It was literally in the, in the footage. So yeah, I guess that person, whoever said that was right. Props to you, whoever said that in my live stream chat. Good job. This would be a great time to mention that I do live stream every single week. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, every week. So if you ever want to check out the trophy hunting in in real time, you know, that might be something you, know, you want to find out, you know? You know? Hey, we're over the 5,500 limit, and we're going into the boss fight with the required amount, so we're good. As long as we don't die three times, we are excellent. However, the Cavalier boss fight is no joke. So... Uh, you want to be wary of his projectile attack here, very much so, because one hit obviously uh, spells disaster on Hell and Hell, so you really want to be looking for that move whenever possible. You want to be hyper aware. You need to be, you need to have practiced this boss enough times to know what he's going to do and when he's going to do it. Always be looking for the projectile. Now, here is where I'll say another rule of thumb for V. Um... Always make sure you have enough Devil Trigger to summon Nightmare at all times. If you ever do decide to use Devil Trigger on anything, no matter what it is, make sure you don't pass three bars, because you need three bars minimum to summon Nightmare. And when you, whenever you die and use the Gold Orb, you gain full, which is great, but always just make sure you have three bars at least. Never fully deplete your Devil Trigger. Why am I telling you to do that? Because, guess what? Your pet's dying one hit on Hell and Hell. I don't know if you noticed. You probably did. Uh, and that could be huge. That could be a huge detriment. With If these pets are not alive, he cannot dodge. He cannot double jump. Uh, if his pets are dead, not only are they in danger, so is he. V is in even more danger when his, when his pets are dead. So, how do you resolve the matter? Summon Nightmare. As long as you have three bars of Devil Trigger, you can summon Nightmare. And whenever you do summon him, you'll always instantly revive your pets. Nightmare summoning will always bring back your pets if they are in a stalemate uh, condition. Stalemating is uh, when your pets are dead. That's the term they use. And uh, yeah, so just always make sure you never drop below three bars. You'll notice that I do that a lot. I'll try to conserve it as much as possible. And as you can see right there, making use of uh, Shadow's iframes on the dodge. You could do the same thing when he, when Cavalier's using his projectile attack. Literally just spam Shadow dodge. Full iframes, literally nothing can damage you when you're doing that. If you just spam the X button, uh, you cannot be hurt. However, as good as those invincibility frames are... Uh, it's not the be-all end-all. If you ever happen to be in the air, there are instances where you could get fucked, and you will see that in this footage. You'll see a great example of that. But uh, until then, we're, we're fighting. But uh, yeah, one thing I would like to say, I did say before that, you know, as long as you have 5,500 style points going into a fight, you have nothing to worry about. You'll, um, you'll get the S rank guaranteed. And the reason I said that is because um, I don't know. Why did I say that? Because you, you don't have to... W Basically, what I'm trying to say is you don't have to worry about building style during a boss fight. You just have to worry about getting through it. That's the point I want to make. Once you enter a boss fight with 5,500 style points, at that point, how, how well you perform is irrelevant. Don't worry about being stylish. Just worry about finishing the fight. That's what's important. As you can see there, both my pets died. 
Uh, and then I summon Nightmare to bring them back, and now I'm spamming R1, I believe, to de-summon them, because I don't want to use Nightmare, or do I? No, yeah, I de-summon them. Yeah. So that's basically what's going through my head. Use Nightmare to bring the pets back, and then de-summon them as soon as possible, because we still want to keep Devil Trigger for when we need it. But yeah, you know, going towards what I said... Uh, don't worry about how stylish you're performing during a boss fight if you have the required amount of style. If you go into a fight with 5500, it doesn't matter how well you perform. Just the fucking focus on living and finishing the fight. That's all that matters. Well, there you go. Uh, I actually didn't have footage there of what I was talking about, but... Um... <laughs> I thought I did. Fuck! So basically, when you summon Nightmare, you have full invincibility frames. I thought I was gonna do it in the footage there, but I didn't. And you, if you're, if you're ever gonna get hit as V and you're in the air, obviously you can't sh shadow dodge if you're in the air. So you would want to summon Nightmare in midair so that you avoid damage. But anyways, here we go. Mission six as Nero. I go into this mission bringing all Overture arms, Devil Breakers, and one Buster arm. So just bring seven Overtures and one Buster, and uh, it's very easy to avoid the spikes. Uh, Nero can stay in the air for quite a while. He's the only character in the game that has a triple jump, which is pretty great. Not only that, his air ton is fantastic <clears throat> for stalling in the air and staying airborne for as long as he wants. So, you can almost virtually spend this entire fight on the boss's back. I think the boss is named Gilgamesh. Um, so you can just stay on his back the entire time if you're, uh, you know, if you do it properly. And basically, I'm just spamming full charge overture on the core over and over. It's doing a lot of damage. Very good. Now, here's the thing. Whenever the turrets shoot, as you can see, it's shooting at me right now. I'm on the opposite side of the core from where it, the, the turret is shooting. So if you ever see a turret about to shoot you, just be on the opposite side of the core from which the direction the, um, the shots are coming from. And the shots will never hit you in that regard. They'll just hit the core instead. So it acts as like a barrier, you're behind cover and you're good. I've used officially all my overtures, and now I just have my buster arm. But the buster arm is great for when you drop the boss. Once the boss gets stunned and goes down, the buster arm will do a ton of damage, so that's why we brought it. And now we just play as normal and do our best to gain as much style as possible. We've dropped him below half health, which is pretty nice. And as you can see, utilizing the air taunt to dodge the spikes over and over. Nero is great at suspending himself in midair. Um, and now I'm looking to gain style at this point, which is why I've double triggered. And I, I, I'm looking for an opportunity to use Showdown. Showdown is very hard to get off on this boss. As you can see, I dodged all the shots because I was on the opposite side, like I said. And if you ever want to get on top of the boss, let's say you drop off. All you have to do is buster arm one of the cores on his legs. And then you just snatch to the destroyed core and it'll instantly bring you to the boss's uh, back and I thought this was a good opportunity to use showdown it wasn't however even though I mistimed that and I ended up getting hit and dying uh, I have built so much style on the boss by this point that me dying doesn't matter so I'm really not concerned with it but yeah so just bust her arm snatch on the leg cores and it'll instantly bring you back to the surface we're very soon going to stun the boss and be able to buster arm him. This boss honestly isn't that bad. He's pretty easy if you know the boss fight very well. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much the gist of it. We know how to dodge his moves. We know his moveset very well. And we are just focusing on uh, gaining as much style as possible. I like what I did there because I dropped off his back when I saw that the turret was aiming at me and there were spikes on the side. Um, like he was gonna spike the side that was usually safe to hide behind cover from the shots and because both spots were in danger I just dropped off his back and never be afraid to do that if you ever need safety just drop off his back it's very easy to get back onto him and then as you can see full charge buster arm devil's trigger on the core after he drops and we're definitely more than stylish enough to get an S now this will be the next mission mission 7 and we are going to pick the and here's a basic rule of thumb for you. If you ever start a mission, and the mission asks you what character you want to play, always choose V. Why? 
because V is better at gaining style than any other character in the game. So playing as V is always easier as the other characters. If you if you're ever given the option to be V, always pick him. <laughs> That's basically the rule of thumb. Like I tried this mission as Nero and got frustrated right out the gate, but then I played it as V and I was like, man, he just he gets triple S so easily and so fast. Like why am I not playing as him? And you'll you'll come to learn that right away. But yeah, that's basically the gist. Uh, this mission is not too bad at all. Quickly dispatching those foes. That'll be the first mandatory fight with 5,100 style exiting it. Now this fight doesn't seem mandatory, but it is. As soon as that portal opens up right there, there is a wall behind it. You could just barely see it behind the portal there. Uh, you are locked in this room until you finish this fight, so this fight is mandatory. But I easily got a triple S, and that's exactly what I was talking about. V is just too damn stylish. He's super sexy sexy, yo. Look at him. I personally love this character so much. <laughs> I re when I was streaming this game, so many people were watching me. Because I streamed my entire uh, process of doing this. I, I live streamed the entire journey of getting the platinum from, from start to finish. And uh, so many people would tell me in chat how much, you know, it sucked to play as V on the harder difficulties and how annoying it was and blah, blah, blah. I love this character so much. I think he's so unique. I think he's so cool. His gameplay mechanics are so creative. He's so different than anything you've ever seen in Devil May Cry before, but in the best way. He's one of the most unique characters to play as that I've ever played in a video game. V is just too cool, man. I love this character. I love playing as him. And even when the going gets tough, I'm still having fun. Like, I, I love this character so much. He's, v is awesome. If they ever make a new Devil May Cry game, I'll be sad because... Well, I won't be sad because obviously I want more Devil May Cry and I hope the series continues. But I'll be sad in regards to... I don't think V will ever be playable again because he's just... Spoiler alert, he's an extension of Virgil, um, and now that Virgil is complete, by the end of this game, why would there be any reason for V to ever exist again? I don't know. I mean, if he is in the next game, that'd be great. I'd love it, but I don't expect to ever see this character again. And there you go. So that's the enemy I was talking about uh, in Mission 5 who's very dangerous, very fast, and very aggressive. He sniped me. They have this attack where they jump and roll at you from midair and snipe you, as you can see. I got hit with it twice in a row within the span of like 10 seconds and instantly lost two of my gold orbs. So that's exactly what I'm talking about when I say that enemy is very dangerous and you do not want to drop your guard against him because it is so easy for him to do that. Now... I definitely probably should have been exploiting camera manipulation during this fight. You'll see me do it in the next fight. But during that fight, I was just playing it casually, and I ended up losing two gold orbs because of it. That fucking sucked. But guess what? This fight will be with Proto Angelo, which is one of the hardest enemies to defeat in the game. So with, with the final fight, I definitely do choose to use the camera manipulation. And if you don't know what camera manipulation is, I will explain it right now. So basically... When you aim your camera away from enemies, if there are no enemies on your screen currently, they will be moving as slow as possible towards you, or they won't be moving at all. They'll just be so inhumanly slow that it's insane. And you can literally, as long as you're not targeting enemies, just spam attacks with Shadow and Griffin, and they'll be attacking enemies that are off camera and thus building style for you. But the enemies won't be moving or retaliating or fighting back. They won't be hunting you down. You'll just be hitting them and gaining style for free. And here we go. I see I've uh, sort of taken the liberty here to just not camera manipulation as much as I was. But camera manipulation helps a bunch in this fight because there are so many enemies here. And they're very tough. They're very durable. They're very bulky and hard to kill. So camera manipulation really helps alleviate the pressure. Uh, for V here, M makes the enemy so slow. But now all we have left is the Proto. Not only is he one of the hardest enemies to defeat in the game, he's one of the most tanky. I swear he has the most more health than any other enemy in the game. 
He's very fucking hard to kill. But we managed to complete that fight with flying colors and gain our S rank despite having died twice. Now, mission eight. This is one of, without question, one of the hardest missions to S rank in the entire game. So get ready because this one is going to take a shit ton of practice and you are going to have to do what you're seeing me do on screen here m most likely multiple times. Several uh, several uh, days of effort or hours of effort will be required for this fight. So basically, uh, there's three enemies that are optional. However, we do need to fight them at least until the third enemy. And I'm not going to kill this third enemy. I'm just taking this opportunity to build style on these three enemies as much as I can. And then we Buster hold him and carry him to the next fight. If you want to know how to do that, Buster is R2 button. You just press Buster and hold it and you will carry him. As long as you don't let go of the button, you won't perform the move. If you carry the enemy into the next fight, you will carry over your style your, your score multiplier into these enemies. If you didn't carry the enemy like you saw me do, your style would have reset and you would have been at zero again. So that's why we carried him into this fight because it's an opportunity to gain more style. And then with the last enemy in that fight, I do the exact same thing. I carry him to the next fight. And now before I enter the next fight, I do a full uh, EX taunt which will max out my style multiplier to triple S, which is great because now we're going into the mult or sorry, the mandatory fight with maxed style multiplier. I full charge ragtime, double trigger showdown, the two Antonoras with a maxed out style multiplier, and this will gain a fuck ton of style. Uh, and this is, from what I could tell, pretty mandatory. When the Fury spawns, full charge triangle attack, and then full charge Buster Arm. If you perfectly time it, once his spawn animation is finished, you can always kill a Fury from full health. Uh, from my understanding, that works on any difficulty, no matter what difficulty you're on. That will Those two moves will always one-shot a Fury. So that's pretty great. Ended the first fight with a lot of style. This is the second mandatory fight. I started with a full-charge Gerbera, and we're prioritizing these Ice Goat Demon enemies. Uh... And we need to kill these guys ASAP. The only other enemy in the room is the Proto, who's very dangerous and bulky, but he's also very slow. So we're not too worried about him. Whereas these Ice Go enemies, if you leave them alone, they will just hurl projectiles at you the entire time. So these guys take precedence. These guys are our priority, and we want to kill them as soon as possible. Make sure you try to build as much style here as you can. Hopefully go... Yep, so we got an S rank going into the Proto fight. Now, because the Proto is so bulky, my favorite thing to do, the trademark, full charge ragtime, double trigger showdown for max damage, max style multiplier. And I make use of as much damage as I can while time is frozen. And I full charge blue rose shots. This actually knocks him down. And when the Proto's knocked down, this will allow you to buster him. But I used Buster Arm there, not regular Buster. Buster Arm does way more damage than regular. And we end that fight with 5,000 style. Not as much as we could have gained, but definitely a good amount. Now this fight you're seeing me do now is, I believe, the only optional fight in the entire game that I actually take. Because Mission 8 is one of the hardest missions to S rank in the game. And this optional fight is one of the best optional fights to take in the game. Even though this fight is optional, you, as you can see, there are so many enemies here in this fight. And they're all the shittiest enemy in the game. They're all Impusas, which is fantastic because they're super easy to kill. They're not that aggressive. They're not very difficult to fight. And they just, they're just meat bags. They gain a shit ton of style and there's a fucking ton of them. By the end of this fight, you're going to see I'm going to gain a lot of style for doing this. And the only threat here are these Impusas. And uh, I don't know the name of the big enemy you're about to see, but this guy spawns. He's the biggest threat by far. And what do we like to do? My trademark. Every time I see a tough enemy, full charge ragtime, devil trigger showdown, full charge buster arm. And this will always instant kill this enemy. He will never survive it. Unless you're on Dante Must Die. Unless you're on that difficulty, he will always die from that combo. 
and then it's just infuses and then you just continue to go to town we had a triple s i shouldn't have lost that triple s there i only did because i was feeling the pressure i was feeling very stressed out about fucking up and i i, I had the, a bad case of the jitters i shouldn't have lost triple s after i killed the big guy but uh if i was playing better i wouldn't have but despite that it's it's still gonna be enough so we're all good and as you can see we have a fuck ton of style during this fight we gain a shit ton of score and these impuzas are all little bitches very easy to gain style on and by the end of this fight i went up to 5743 which is fantastic great as you can see that fight is a great opportunity to gain a shit ton of style now i was very nervous going into this fight because i had no more devil breakers left so i had to just perform as at the best as i possibly could without any real advantages from devil breakers and that's very stressful because devil breakers are great for building style and i didn't have any so i had to purely focus on just my skill alone and my ability to accumulate score this was a huge risk. I double trigger showdown to nobody without using ragtime. That was insanely risky. That nobody nobodies are very fast and very aggressive. That nobody could have very easily just turned his head and smacked me out of that shit and there would have been nothing I could do about it and it would have reset my score multiplier. And uh that was a huge risk I took. Why did I take it? Because I knew if I didn't do that combo Devil Trigger Showdown always builds your style so high. I think, like, minimum it'll take you to an S or at least a double S most of the time. And I needed an S or a double S in order to kill all these other uh, Ice Goat enemies so that I could build up style. And it was so important to end this final battle with a good amount of style because that was the last mandatory fight of the mission. And much to my pleasure... I was able to build over 5,500 style and go into the Urizen fight with the required amount of style. Why is this important? Well, normally when you're playing missions on Hell and Hell, you want to try and get the no damage bonus in order to get the S. But on mission 8, this is incredibly difficult. Beating this Urizen fight without taking damage is very hard. It's so easy to get hit by Urizen here and you're going to see me get hit. I do a great job dodging him for the most part. Also, I bought uh, eight Helter Skelters before going into this because when Helter Skelter not only destroys the Urizen Crystal very fast, but you're also, you also have full immunity frames when you're doing it. So if you just buy eight Helter Skelters, it's a great way to get through that fight very quickly. But as you can see, I still got hit. Um, but because I had the 5,500 limit going into it, it didn't matter that I got hit. Even though I lost the no damage multiplier, I was still able to gain the S. And that mission is one of the hardest missions to S rank in the game. So I wish you guys the best of luck. I hope that you guys can replicate what I did and do your best and hopefully achieve that one for yourself. Because that is easily one of the hardest things about platinuming this game is, miss or is S ranking mission 8. Now we're on uh, the next V mission, mission nine. And uh, as you can see, uh, this is when majority of V fights are very threatening. Mission nine has a lot of very scary enemies that you need to fight. Um, so I, you will see me utilize the camera manipulation trick quite often here. I use it quite a lot and rely on it as much as I can um, because I just don't want so many enemies up my ass. Also, I didn't mention this before, but uh, it is best to use uh, V's ranged execute over his actual normal execute, which is a long, drawn-out animation, and he can be hit while doing it. But if you spend one bar of Devil Trigger uh, to do use the range ex execute on enemies, it's just far better to go that way because it's so much safer and you're not wide open and susceptible to damage like you are on the regular animation. I would just highly recommend using that to execute enemies whenever you can. It's always the safer way to go. But as you can see, I'm trying to uh, use camera manipulation as much as possible during this fight. However, Judicas make that very difficult because they are constantly teleporting on screen. Thus, they are always on camera and always aggressive. 
enemies are only docile when they're not on camera, but because Judica's teleport, they're usually always on camera. So it's very hard to camera manipulate against Judica's. So that's why these enemies suck and they're very stressful. They're also very hard to kill. They have a shit ton of health and they're very spooky. It's very easy to get hit by these guys. They're pretty fast. They're always teleporting around. Very stressful. And there's two of them in this fight. So that's a very stressful fight. But as hard as that fight is to finish, this mission, as you can see, I ended that fight with 5,900, nearly 6,000 style. You could build so much style in this mission, it's not even funny. Like, as long as you're playing well, you will be rewarded for it. This mission offers a ton of style and rewards you for performing well. So, uh, you know, take solace in that. You don't have to worry too much about RNG or uh, being unlucky in this mission. As long as you're doing well, you're going to see results. This fight sucks. I hate those uh, those red hellbat enemies. I don't know what they're called. Maybe they are called hellbats, and I just didn't know. Who knows? Maybe I got it right. But that fight sucks. I hate them because they have ranged attacks. It's very easy to take a hit from them. But just do your best. As you can see, I finished that fight with a lot of style. I don't think I lost any style there. Or minimal. This fight's very spooky. This will be the next mandatory fight in the mission. And these enemies are... Uh, I don't remember their name. But if you leave them be, they'll charge a ranged magic attack that is very dangerous. Um, it'll track you, it'll home you wherever, it'll home in on you wherever you go, and if they get the attack off and finish charging it, you are very much in danger. However, I guess as V, theoretically, you could just spam Shadow Dash and it, it would never hit you, but it's still very spooky if you don't see it coming. Now, this will be the second last fight in the mission. Uh, you'll be up against a few Sin Scissors, as well as a Proto. This fight is very scary. But, uh, with camera manipulation, anything is possible. Um, so yeah, we're just reading our book, building as much Devil Trigger as possible. We'll summon Nightmare once we get full Devil Trigger. Keep reading the book so Nightmare can stay out as long as possible. And I keep full charging Griffin Shot, so I'm hitting as many enemies as I can. Uh, occasionally I'll throw in a taunt whenever possible. You'll see me doing that a lot throughout the footage. You, I've done it a lot many times throughout the missions that I've already completed. I just never pointed it out, but building style during a fight, taunt is a great way to do that, uh, specifically air taunt. Air taunts are usually a lot faster, the animation isn't as long or drawn out, and it has the same uh, principles and the same level of, of effectiveness, so I would recommend taunting throughout fights as much as you can, especially if you're stressing about building style, it's a great way to build style. That was two protos, holy shit. I thought it was only one. There's actually two. But I still have over the required amount, so I would have to fuck up enormously and stupendously in order to not get the S here. And now the last fight is literally just a bunch of nobodies. And like I said, nobodies are very scary. They're very fast, they're very aggressive, and they're very hard to kill. So utilizing camera manipulation during this fight is a very good idea, because nobodies are very scary. So, I'm just doing whatever I can, reading my book, charging as much Devil Trigger as possible. My pets did all the work for me, and then I just executed the nobodies. No damage bonus, easy S rank. My mission's really not that bad. It does require uh, a lot of knowledge about the enemies you're facing. But now, we are going into mission 10, which is the hardest mission to S rank in the entire game. And this mission is no joke this is literally i in my opinion the hardest challenge that this entire platinum trophy offers the player mission 10 is without a doubt the hardest mission to s rank in the game now with this mission i will not be speeding up any of the fights because it's very important that i talk about what is required in order to s rank this mission now with this first fight I just recommend being as stylish as possible. That is my number one recommendation. Use as many different attacks and weapons as you can. Be as stylish as you possibly can that is within your power. The second you build up a triple S, that is when you can, you don't have to worry about building style anymore. Once you have the triple S, the way the score multiplier works in Devil May Cry 5 is you, the damage you deal after achieving the triple S 
will constitute towards like max style points. So once I hit the triple S, I just use Foss to finish him off. It doesn't matter that it's just a very bare bones uh, basic attack to just Foss shoot him. It doesn't matter. Since we have a triple S, we're gaining max style points for it. And that's how the score system works. You also want to really make sure that you've put all the Devil Trigger you've gained from that first fight into Sin Devil Trigger. That is very important. Going into this next fight, walk up to this dark patch of ground on the left side here. And as soon as you reach it, start charging Red Hot Knight with Foss. This will be the cheese strategy. Target the same enemy you saw me targeting. And if done correctly and timed correctly, you will kill every single enemy that spawned as well as the Judica. However, if the Judica did live and you mistimed it, it is still possible to kill the Judica with regular attacks. He should be very low on health. You could still salvage that situation if you fucked up the timing. And then, of course, you just Foss shoot the remainder of the enemies. And then going into this next fight, very basic. We're just Foss shooting these enemies to death until we get through. Uh, anything else is too risky. I don't want to chance it. Uh, these enemies are very aggressive and it's easy to take damage from them So I just want to shoot them and get them out of the way um, And that's basically going to be the rest of the mission We're just going to be fast cheesing every single battle from here on out You can even do this on furies, which you're about to see uh, Next fight is going to be with a fury. However, if you time this correctly uh, As soon as the fury starts spawning you charge red hot knight Don't charge it any longer than necessary. Let it go at level one because there are three stages to Red Hot Knight. Just when you start charging Red Hot, Red Hot Knight, let go of Circle. And then that will automatically release level one Red Hot Knight. And if timed correctly, it's enough to kill Fury. Um, so as long as you perfectly timed it, you'll get it. This, this fight's scary as well because the Judica spawns. I targeted the wrong enemy there, which is why I fucked it up. However, the Judica did take a lot of damage from the Red Hot Knight, as you can see. And I was able to kill him relatively easily, even though he survived. If timed correctly, though, if he didn't fuck up like I did, every single enemy should have died from the Red Hot Knight. But, yeah, I only fucked it up because I was targeting the wrong enemy. You need to target the Judica before you let go of the Red Hot Knight, and then uh, focus on timing it right, and it'll hit every enemy in the room, and you'll kill them all in one shot. I'm also taking this opportunity to build style because these enemies are very non-threatening. You don't have to do that. You could literally just Faust kill them uh, if you want to play it safe and not risk it. With Now, normally there would be a uh, forced mandatory fight here, but you can avoid it if you jump up into this optional fight in this room, and then as soon as the enemies start spawning, you could run outside the room and then run through this next room. Like I said, normally there's a mandatory fight in this room. However, because we spawned the enemies in the previous room, the mandatory fight doesn't show up, so you could just run on through for free, which is great. Now, once you reach this part, as soon as you drop down and skip the cutscene, charge Red Hot Knight level 1 on the Red Hellbat. It should instantly kill him. I missed because I was targeting the wrong enemy, but uh, rest assured, that should work for you if you didn't fuck up like I did. If you do fuck up like I did, you could just shoot him like you saw me do. Once all of the enemies in this room are dead, it will spawn a new wave of enemies. So you want to, as soon as possible, jump up and send Devil Trigger. Now, that's not the move you want to use. That was the wrong move, so I canceled it. You want to use Demolition, which is what you just saw me do. That'll instantly kill... I think there's a Fury in this room, which is who I used it on. I don't actually know what enemy was in this room, but I Demolitioned him. And you don't want to target any of the enemies. You want to do this all while not targeting. And then use Judgment before Sin Devil Trigger finishes you will kill every enemy in that room and that'll be that room i know that was a lot of information to process at once a lot happened there but trust me you do exactly what i did and again it's very important not to target the enemies and you will get through that room with flying colors um the proto lived he survived my red hot knight but red hot knight if done correctly should kill every enemy there on the one shot that'll be the last fight in mission 10 and then all we have is Urizen. As soon as the Urizen fight starts, you want to start shooting with Faust immediately. If done correctly, you should be able to just kill him for free without him even being able to hit you. However, there is a chance that Urizen will attack you. And if he does, make sure you have uh, Trickster equipped. And then just spam Trickster Dodge in order to evade whatever he does. And then just keep shooting him afterward. 
And that is how you S rank mission 10, baby. That was a shit ton of information. I know, very stressful. But follow my instructions to the T, and I guarantee, I promise you, you will see success. Now, we're on mission 11. This mission is very easy to S rank. I just focus on building as much style as possible. As soon as you finish this first wave of enemies, a fury is going to spawn, as you can see. And I... <laughs> this is really funny. I mistimed the Red Hot Knight. If you time a Red Hot Knight, as I showed you in Mission 10, uh, perfectly with uh, Fury spawn, you'll insta-kill him. I mistimed it. I started charging it way late. However, I got lucky and hit him anyway. <laughs> and even though I fucked up the timing on the Red Hot Knight, or, sorry, Red Hot Knight, um, I still got him somehow. So, that was great. Finished that fight with a shit ton of style. Now, in this fight, just get rid of the stragglers. You do have the Judica who is a big worry, one of the harder enemies to beat. However, my strategy on Judica, literally spam Balrog Punch. Just run up to him and keep punching him over and over and over and over and over in the face. Eventually, Judica will be stunned for a long time if you just keep punching him, as you can see. And he just lets you do whatever you want to him once you've stunned him. So I used the uh, Dragon Uppercut or whatever the fuck you want to call that move. Um, now, in this next fight, as soon as you get up there, you can Red Hot Knight the Proto to instantly kill him. And then every other enemy in the fight is as easy as just using Faust. Because we've built a shit ton of style. We uh, By this point, we don't need to focus on being more stylish. Uh, we don't need to build more style. We have more than enough style to finish the mission. So we might as well just finish off these enemies and be on our merry way. And that was the last mandatory fight of the mission. We have 4,500, but... We don't care. doesn't matter. Even though we're going to, into the boss without 5,500, the no damage bonus will be more than enough to push us there. So it's all good. As soon as the Cavalier boss fight starts, he's just going to be spamming projectiles until he reaches you. So just have Trickster equipped and just keep focusing on dodging him and shoot him whenever he's, uh, you know, time the, your Foss shots for when he's not attacking. And then once he gets up to you close enough, he's going to keep trying to hit you. Whenever his shield's up, you won't be able to damage him, but if you time your shots uh, after he's recovering from an attack, you'll be able to deal some damage. Basically, we're just waiting for Cavalier to use his teleport attack. The second you see Cavalier tel teleport, you start charging uh, Red Hot Knight, and then that's going to be the boss fight. This boss fight is very easy. Just focus on dodging him. Trickster is the key here. Trickster Faust. There he goes. He's teleporting. And um, you could, as you can see, I took some time to get a little closer because Red Hot Knight does have a draw distance. It won't work from the furthest distance. So you do need to make sure you're a little bit close enough. But that was more than enough time to charge a, um, I actually don't know if that was level one or level two Faust, but it was enough to kill him. <laughs> There's a Fury, we ran right past him in mission 12. Um, that fury is not mandatory, so just run right past them. Once these enemies start spawning, charge Red Hot Knight, and if timed successfully, you'll kill everyone in the room. Pretty great. Uh, it, it With this mission, it doesn't matter if you're stylish. We just need the no damage bonus, and that'll be enough to get an S. Uh, I will be teaching you how to do the skips in this mission. So this will be the first skip. Uh, we're skipping as many mandatory fights as we possibly can. The key is Cavalier and Trickster. So we're going to jump up. And this is backwards triangle. We're going to do three backwards triangle cavaliers. And then that'll be enough to give you enough height to get to the first platform. Destroy the first blood sack. Then we're going to do the same thing. Jump. Triple back triangle cavalier. And then we're going to trickster dash in the air. Double jump and uh, forward circle trickster maneuver. Which will allow you to teleport and gain enough distance for the second skip, once you get to this mandatory fight, it's as easy as another Red Hot Knight. The Queen and Pusa will be very low health, and then you just finish her off easy peasy. Red Hot Knights are great. Foss is broken. Pay to win. Uh, the, the weapon is literally responsible for the majority of S ranks in this game. Uh, we're going to de destroy the next Blood Sack. Now we only need one more. We're going to run back the way we came and perform the third and final skip of the level. Same thing. Jump. Triple back triangle cavalier, air trickster, uh, double jump teleport. That'll lead you to the final blood sack. We're going to destroy this. And once we have, we will be able to make our way to the Urzan boss fight. 
This level is very short, very easy, and very quick to get through if you perform the skips. As soon as the Urizen fight starts, use Demolition. This will instantly destroy his crystal. Now we can dis now we can damage him. I was about to say destroy him, which I guess is what we're going to do. And before my Sin Devil trigger runs out, I perform Judgment. Uh, you are fully immune. You have full iframes when you're using Judgment, so don't worry about getting hit. As long as you perform the move, you'll be fine. Now, to dodge this tentacle, it's very hard to dodge, but if you spam Trickster, chances are it's not going to hit you. And we just Foss shoot him as much as we can until he eventually... Uh, now, you want a Red Hot Knight him when he stuns. I mistimed it here. I should have been charging the Red Hot Knight sooner, but it still did a fuck ton of damage. So even though I fucked up a little bit, we're okay. And now you want to use backwards trying... Or, sorry, backwards square on Foss. And you'll summon these red orb crystals surrounding Dante. And if you're near the crystal... This will damage it so fucking fast, you'll destroy the crystal in seconds. So I just summoned more red orbs there with backwards triangle. And you just trickster spam dodge to dodge all of his attacks. This will destroy the crystal insanely fast. I got unlucky there because he immediately summoned another crystal. But it's not going to matter there because the red orbs destroy the crystal way too fast for yours and to take advantage of. And at this point, again, keep focusing on dodging his attacks. And now... We're just going to Faust him to death, and that's going to be the Urizen fight for a easy no-damage bonus S-rank. All right, and up next, we're going to have mission 13. This mission is very quick, it's very short, and very easy. Uh, and we're going to pick V, like I said. Uh, any mission where you get the opportunity to pick V, you always should, because he's just so damn good at building style. God damn, that boy's so stylish. Look, look at him. Uh, this is the first mandatory fight of the mission. Goes by very quick because it's just the one enemy. So, uh, he can go fuck himself. And now for the rest of the mission, this mission's pretty interesting because no other fight in the mission is mandatory, technically. Because you could just ignore the enemies and destroy the, uh, blood sacks that remove the roots from, uh, covering the exit. So, you know, in theory you could just do that, but... I did do a lot of fighting, as you can see, I built up 7,000 style... Uh, and I even died, but we have so much style that that really doesn't matter. As long as we don't die three times, we're fine. Um, there are a fuck ton of enemies, though, so I would advise making use of the, uh, camera manipulation in these fights, because, yeah, it could get pretty dicey. But, yeah, um, we're not gonna analyze that mission too much, because it's very easy, and, uh, this will be the last fight of the mission. But, again, all you have to do, really, is just destroy the, uh, blood sacks, but... Even still, if you do decide to fight the enemies, uh, like I did, it, it's not that bad. Uh, these rooms are massive, which gives you a lot of room to, uh, use camera manipulation. I actually did die twice in that mission, funny enough. But, uh, didn't matter, because as long as we don't die three times, we're good. Alright, now moving on to mission 14. Now, this mission is tricky. So, we're gonna start with the Artemis boss fight. And I took Griffin to be my first, uh pet that I take back, you you can pick and fight the bosses in whatever order you want, and you can take back your pets in whatever order you want. I do find Artemis to be the least threatening out of the three bosses. All of her moves are very easy to dodge. Uh, you just have to know her moveset well enough to be able to see what she's doing and react to it. And you, you as you can see, you literally just run around the room uh, dodging her attacks uh, while Griffin slowly whittles her down. Um, I, you don't have to focus too much on being stylish, uh, stylish, sorry, during these fights. I would just recommend that your, your first, uh, priority should be, uh, going for no damage because, uh, it is pretty hard to build up style during this mission, considering the only enemies in the mission are the bosses, and they are somewhat hard to build style on, Especially in these unique cases. Like, I only had Griffin here to fight Artemis with, so... Uh, that makes it really difficult to build a decent amount of style. So really, um... Just focus on not taking damage. Uh, which does require to, uh, you to have a uh, decent amount of knowledge of the boss's attacks, their behavior, what they do. Um, with Goliath here... I, I say he's the easiest to build style on out of the three bosses. But, um... He can be a little scary... Most of the fight, he's aggro to your pets, and you don't really have anything to worry about. 
But there are a lot of times where he will take out your pets because, you know, obviously they died one hit. And then he loves to do this bum rush tackle attack, and it could it could really catch you off guard if you're not prepared for it. Um, especially if Shadow is dead and uh, you have no way of exploiting uh, invincibility frames. It could be pretty tricky to avoid that attack, so just be careful. I'd say that is his most dangerous attack because, he, like, right there, if he ever just decides to drop aggro off the pets uh, and attack the player character... Yeah, you really need to be looking out for that move, because it is by far his most dangerous attack that could catch you. But yeah, uh, besides that, the Goliath fight really isn't too bad. We did manage to build up an S. Uh, as I said, it is definitely the easiest mission to build style on. And then lastly, we have Cavalier, and we're going to take back Nightmare last. I don't know who in God's name would take Nightmare first. That just wouldn't make any sense. But here we go. Uh, the main thing to worry about when you're fighting Cavalier is his projectile attach, er, attacks, sorry, of which he has two. Uh, the, the Raining Thunderbolts, like you just saw, he just did it. Uh, those are the tricky one to dodge because if you don't, if you're not focused on Cavalier when he d uses the attack, uh, it's very easy to not even realize that he did it. And then all of a sudden, bam, a fucking Thunderbolt hits you in the head and you lose your no damage bonus. So you really want to be looking out for that attack. And then, of course, his, there's his other projectile attack where he just shoots uh, lightning bolts from his fingertips at you. That one's a lot easier to see coming. But we did manage to build up a double S. And there we go. That is going to be the no damage S rank. Oh, and by the way, I forgot to mention, for that mission, I was actually using auto combos. That is the only V mission in the game where I use auto combos. Because, uh, like I said, it's hard to build style on the bosses. So, auto combos, I find, give you an easier time building combos, because uh, the game's just doing the combos for you, right? You do receive a score penalty for using auto combo, however, if you get the no damage bonus, the penalty's not enough to drop you below an S, so that's why I ended up using it, and it did actually make the mission a little easier, so uh, you guys can feel free to use the same strategy if you'd like. Now we're on the Nero mission, uh, I just talked over the whole first fight. Eventually, you'll get to this fork in the road. You want to take this path because uh, the other path has a fury. And the path I took just has uh, knights with shields. But you could just literally run past them all and jump over them and make your way to the next mandatory fight. So you want to be mindful of that. Don't go the other path because there's a fury. Um, but yeah. And then eventually we get to this fight. These enemies, uh, you know, very uh, not that difficult to deal with with ragtime uh Devil Trigger Showdown, Buster Arm. Uh, these guys are not a problem at all. We know how to take care of these guys. Easy peasy. But we still need more style. Uh, so for this next mandatory fight, here's a trick I like to use on Judica as Nero. Full charge Ragtime, run up, smack him three times, and then full charge Buster Arm. We'll always one-shot the Judica. Now, when you smack him three times with the Red Queen combo, it has to be the first three hits of the Red Queen combo. Um, if if let's say you miss the first swing and you hit him three times uh but you land like the final triangle attack you don't want to hit the judica with the final tri triangle attack because it'll knock the judica down and you won't be able to buster arm grab him so it does have to be specifically the first three swings uh so just be mindful of that when you want to delete a judica uh and besides that the rest of the fight is pretty bog standard same as the first fight i didn't talk about these, you should know these enemies inside and out by now. The battle shouldn't be too difficult. And uh, before I started the boss fight here with Malfas, I believe her name is, uh, I I bought a bunch of Gerberas, as you can see, uh, when at Nico's shop just before the boss fight started. The reason for that is because this, th this boss only has one scary attack. This boss is very easy, but uh, sometimes Malfas likes to go absolutely insane berserk, and you'll see the chicken, like, turned dark and gooey. And when that happens, the chicken is about to go berserk, and it'll start rampaging around the arena, and it is very, very easy to get hit by it. So here comes the berserk right now. Uh, he's in the black gooey state, or sorry, she. Gerbera is great for this because Nero already does a great job at staying in the air, but Gerbera just helps with that. Because the air uh, circle with Gerbera will uh, keep you airborne even longer. So that's what I like to do. Uh, it makes it easier to dodge. And then you just spam charge shot over and over on her until she eventually gets knocked down like this. And then you devil trigger showdown. 
Uh, the classic tried and true, full charge buster arm. Does a fuck ton of damage to her. Uh, I actually mistimed the buster arm there. Um, that was foolish. But I definitely could have hit her with it if I wasn't such a fool. But anyways, uh, this boss is very easy. And that that is basically all you're trying to do the entire fight. And then once she does this, uh, once again, I've never seen what this attack even looks like. Just like Artemis's big attack. Because I've never let her finish uh, charging this. But when she does it, she just gives you free reins to fucking just beat her ass and wail on her. Uh, so attacks like these are great. Great opportunity to build style and fuck up the boss for free. We love when the boss does stuff like this. Absolutely, fucking lootly we love it. We take those. So there we go. I finally used the full charge buster arm. On the second knockdown, it's going to do well, uh, more than enough damage uh, to finish her off. Buster arm does... It's insane how much more damage buster arm does than, like, regular buster. It's, it's, it's crazy. It's incredible. It's insane, even, I would say. Alright, mission 16. Here we go. Now we're playing as Dante. This mission has to be done very particularly. So, as you're uh, jumping down the first shaft, grabbing, make sure you grab the Devil Trigger orbs and put them into your Sin Devil Trigger. We are going to need Sin Devil Trigger in this mission, so make sure you do that. Now I charge, uh, uh, switch to Swordmaster and charge Round Trip with Summon Swords, and I charge Drive. Let them all rip as soon as the Nobody spawn. And this will keep them busy long enough for you to charge a Red Hot Knight, uh, thus deleting the first fight. Um, that, f that requires, uh, good positioning and good timing and good execution, but it's not that difficult to do. Um, so as you can see, I have full Sin Devil Trigger now, so now we're A-OK. -okay. This will be the second mandatory fight of the level, and for this fight, I'm not worried about being stylish. I just want to get through it, so we're just Foss spamming on every single enemy until they're dead. Very good. Now, I believe for the next path, there's a fork in the road. You can either go across the gap or down. We want to go across the gap because both directions lead you to a mandatory fight, but I find the fight in this direction is easier and more manageable than the other one. So make sure you come this way. Uh, this fight is just going to be two of those big uh, imprisoned uh, blind fuckers. Or I, I don't know the enemy's name, but these guys. As soon as you drop down, you just charge Red Hot Knight and that's it. Very easy, moving right along. Now the next fight's gonna be a little trickier, sort of. Uh, when you drop down here, the Adjudica's gonna start spawning. You wanna start charging Red Hot Knight as quick as possible. And as soon as the Judica shows up, wham, bam, eggs and ham. I don't know why I said that was tricky. Well, I guess the timing's tricky on it. Because if you're too slow there, they're gonna show up and fuck up the timing. So before you drop down the next gap, you wanna turn into Send Devil Trigger first. Because the startup time on transforming takes a while and then just demolition the fury as soon as you see him and now all we have to worry about are sin scissors so uh i try to make use of uh actually no i don't i was about to lie to you uh so we just uh keep as much distance as possible here we go i was th that's what i was about to say we use camera manipulation here to make them more docile so they're not so aggressive and just shoot them down with thost all right, and moving right along, I do believe that was the last battle. Yes, so now all we have to worry about is Cerberus. Now, Cerberus is one of the, I would say, one of the bulkiest, hardest to kill bosses. Not necessarily because he's hard to fight, but it's just very hard to deal good damage to him because he's just so damn bulky. But I keep as much uh, distance as I can away from him. Be very mindful for dodging his attacks. Switch to Trickster whenever you need to. And I just Foss shoot his faces. Make sure to alternate targets between the heads. Don't just shoot one head. Because if you shoot multiple heads, it'll make him stun faster. And whenever you see him go for something like this, you would want to charge Red Hot Knight. I didn't charge it there because I fucked up the timing, so I just didn't bother. Uh, and I just kept shooting him instead. I did actually end up stunning him and knocking him down because I shot his head enough times. When he's stunned, he gives you plenty of time to charge Red Hot Knight. And those are the two big windows for Red Hot Knight. When he's knocked down, or when um, when he's about to like nuke the room and change element. You, those are always opportunities to Red Hot Knight him. So, uh, But I do make use of Sin Devil Trigger here, uh, imp improvising just a little bit. Not only relying on um, fucking Red Hot Knight. We're just switching it up a little bit. Uh, doing virtually almost no damage to him here because 
uh, Cerberus only really takes damage if you're hitting him in the heads. If you're hitting him anywhere else on his body, he takes fuck all for damage. So, uh, but we did end up knocking him over with Judgment, which was pretty cool. Uh, allowing me to Red Hot Knight him for free one more time. Now that fight, there was some improv Im Im improvisation there. Is that how you say that word? I feel like I totally fucked up that word. But anyways, just do your best. It'll definitely require some practice. Now, I fucked up the timing there. I used a fucking uh, standard circle gunslinger move. I should have been able to charge Red Hot Knight longer there, but I didn't. Uh, also... Keep in mind, I haven't been doing this too much in the footage because for me, it's a bad habit and I always forget. But if you Devil Trigger before you let go of Red Hot Knight, it does significantly more damage. I just literally always forget to do it. I probably should have mentioned that sooner in the video. But, oh well. Anyways, uh, so the, the strategy here for um, Yurizen is I just keep enemy jumping off of him and spamming Thos, shooting him. This will uh, take a while, but eventually he will get stunned. Um, and you always want to be above Urizen in this fight, which is why I like to enemy jump off of him a lot. And Trickster's great for that too, because if he ever moves away from you, you could just close the gap by dashing towards him and then enemy jump off of him again. Just always be above him, and he can't hit you with any attacks in this first phase. He'll just whiff everything. So, we're just spamming uh, Foss Shoot. And if you ever see him teleport away, that is a free opportunity to Red Hot Knight him. Every time he does this... Uh, he gives you a, a great window. And as long as you're not too close to him when he does the shockwave, you won't get stunned by it. There we go. I remembered the devil trigger this time in Red Hot Knight. So, honestly, he should probably be dead right now if I didn't fuck up at the beginning. But uh, once he gets to this phase, he's a lot trickier. He, he actually phased again, which is hilarious. I did so much damage to him, I double phased him. So now he's doing that shit again. Um... And unfortunately, he dodged a lot of the damage there because of the shockwave. I think he had some iframes or something. But, doesn't matter. As soon as he ports away from me, just boss shoot him, gun him down. That fight's really not that difficult. Um, but again, like any boss fight, I would recommend practicing it beforehand just to get it down. Alright, mission 18. This is one of the hardest missions to S-rank in the game. We are going to be relying on no damage for this mission. Uh, but as soon as the mission starts, we're going to make use of camera manipulation right off the bat. Griffin won't attack you if you don't, if he's not on camera. So we're just taking the opportunity to exploit that and build up an EX taunt, which will give me an S rank style. Uh, don't target him like I did, just shoot him uh, without him being on camera. And that way he won't fight back. You just shoot him for free. I put all my Devil Trigger into Sin Devil Trigger. You need to remember to do that because we are going to be relying on Sin Devil Trigger for this strategy to work. And also, you'll notice I destroyed a Blood Sack there. Make sure you remember to do that. If you don't destroy the blood sacks in this level, Nightmare will be able to heal and it'll make the boss fight a lot harder at the end. But as soon as uh, Shadow spawns here on the next fight, we're just going to turn around, run straight back to the wall, and start shooting him as quick as possible. You want to be fast here because Shadow can uh, get to you and hit you if you're not careful. Uh, and just utilize camera manip manipulation once again, and you will kill him before he, he can even fight back. And after the Shadow Fight, we can destroy two more Blood Sacks before we go into the next fight. Destroying all three of the Blood Sacks will make it so that Nightmare can't heal, which is great. Makes the boss fight a lot easier. Now I just run up here. Uh, a little bit too soon there, Matt. Run up until you, uh, you hear Griffin and Shadow spawn. And then we run back to the wall where we came from. And camera manipulation, shoot again. Now, if Dante's shooting off to the left, as you can see here... That means he's targeting Shadow. If he was more aiming towards the right, that means you're targeting Griffin. You don't want to target Griffin there. You want to target Shadow. Defeating Shadow ends the fight, whereas I think Griffin doesn't. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's the case. Now, with the boss fight, we're just going to come over to the corner here. Double jump, air hike, sin, devil trigger. You want to get as much height here as possible. It's very important that you uh, sin, devil trigger at the peak of your jump. Because you see how Nightmare's below me trying to punch me right now? If you're not high enough, he can actually hit you with a punch. And that, I think, might have hit me, but I was able to use Judgment, which gives me full iframes. Now we're hitting everyone in the room, uh, which is great. Nightmare, I believe, will despawn after that. Yes, he does. So now it's just Shadow and Griffin, so we need to knock them both down in order to get to the next phase of the fight. So I'm going to Trickster Spam all the way to the other end of the room and start shooting. Here, it doesn't matter who you're shooting because we need to down them both, so just shoot Griffin or Shadow. Now, Griffin sometimes will attack you when you're on the back wall here. Uh, and if he does, he, as you can see, I jumped and avoided it. Uh, if Griffin ever does attack you, he always gives you an audio cue beforehand. He'll say something like, 
eat it or, or some shit or um uh, coming at you baby is another thing he likes to say if you hear any of griffin's quotes it means he's about to attack you so just move the fuck out of the way now as soon as they're both dealt with i started charging this too early you should wait until nightmare has almost fully formed before you let go of the red hot knight um but i ended up instantly killing him anyway so it doesn't matter but uh, the reason why you want to wait for a second there because, is because if he does manage to respawn Shadow and Griffin, you want to be hitting all three of them with their head of the Hot Knight. But, like, as you can see, it's not that important. But anyways, mission 19, here we go. So, the strategy for Virgil, sword, switch to Swordmaster and start charging round trip summon swords right away. And basically, we're looking for a window where Virgil is uses an attack. The second he uses an attack, dodge it and let go of your round trip. Uh, to punish him at, on recovery. Then he will do start doing this. You devil trigger, uh, turn devil trigger when he starts shooting summon swords at you. And that way your summon swords will block his summon swords. And then you just charge red hot knight. And if timed correctly, he won't hit you. You'll get the no damage bonus and you'll S rank the mission, which is fantastic. Very easy way to deal with Virgil. Now with Nero, it's a lot trickier. We don't have an instant, uh, an insta gib strategy with Nero. However, what I like to do is just bring punchlines and buster arms in uh, one after the other. So it goes punchline, buster arm, punchline, buster arm. And that's pretty much what I do for the whole loadout. Now, similar to the fight that we just had with Dante versus Virgil, we want a way for Virgil to use an attack. Uh, this will allow you for an opening in order to punchline him. If you always punchline after he attacks, you'll be able to land the hit. And after three punchlines, he will stun. And then you can Devil Trigger Showdown, and then immediately after that, Full Charge Punchline. And then as soon as that finishes, Full Charge Buster Arm, if timed uh, correctly, you will be able to use all three of those attacks against him. And this will do a shit ton of damage. We'll have him a little less than half at this point, which is great. However, the next part of the fight is definitely the trickiest. Virgil is now going to become a lot harder to deal damage to. Um... Not yet, I see, but he will eventually turn Sin Devil Trigger. I punished him for using an attack there. If you ever see Summon Swords around you, just charge uh, Blue Rose Shot until they're all destroyed. And I'm still continuing to dodge him. I'm surprised he hasn't gone Devil Trigger yet. But this also goes for when he uh, surrounds himself with swords. You could either charge, shoot them away, or uh, Punchline gets rid of them as well. You want to be looking out for that move, and the second you see him do it... Uh, jump, air taunt, triple jump, air taunt, uh, alternate taunts with jumps, and you can get a lot of distance to get out of there. So now he has finally Sin Devil triggered. Uh, what I like to do is get rid of the doppelganger as fast as possible. He dies very quickly if you charge shoot him with Blue Rose. And then, um, even though Virgil is a lot scarier when he's like this, he actually bullseyed me there. Um, you, you want to use the same strategy whenever he's open, punchline him. Even when he's in Devil Trigger, that strategy still works. Um, he only exited Devil Trigger because he killed me. He, otherwise, he would still be in Devil Trigger right now. But I did punchline him enough times after a, an attack that I managed to stun him again. And once he's stunned, Devil Trigger Showdown, punchline, and Buster Arm for the victory. It's funny because actually getting hit did technically make this easier because he uh, exited Devil Trigger Um because he killed me but he would have still been in it if he didn't hit me so and then the fight would have been harder but that's going to be every single mission in devil may cry 5 with all s ranks on hell and hell difficulty thank you guys so much for watching this video i truly hope that you guys enjoyed it and if you did please don't forget to leave a like on the video subscribe to the channel for all things trophy related and of course hit that notification bell to support me i would really appreciate it and hopefully this video helped you guys enough uh, to allow you to manage to get the S rank on every single mission. Make sure to visit my channel homepage for more trophy guide videos, just like this one on other games. Anyways, that's going to be it for me, so take it easy, everybody. Have a good one, and I will definitely see you in the next one.